commonly used spy matching networks. The um, now the difference between the spy matching networks and the simple uh, L matching networks that we have considered before, talked before in the series of uh, matching networks, um, is that you have you can tune the parameter that is Q, the quality factor associated with the uh, matching. So you can you can control the overall frequency response because it turns out that you have a parameter which is the center impedance in the spy matching network. So how this spy matching network comes into the picture is that you have two L uh, matching networks, back to back L matching networks that forms a pi topology like this. Okay, so you have a pi topology. This is your pi matching network, and uh, this is this is composed from back-to-back -back L networks that can provide you a better or a higher Q. That is the, that means the, 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 uh, the bandwidth of the match is narrow at the design frequency. So um, these networks, they can produce a higher Q, okay, with back-to-back -back L networks, each one transforming down to a center impedance that is lower than either the generator or the source resistance. So this uh, parameter, Z center, is, let's call this ZC, is to be set less than minimum, less than the minimum of uh, RS, that is the source resistance and the load resistance, okay? Because if you're going to set it beyond the minimum of RS and RL, you're going to compromise the bandwidth of the match as well as the power that is being transferred, okay? so. We'll, we'll uh, talk about that later, but for now, let's keep this fact in mind that the center impedance has to be less than minimum uh, the source and load distance. For example, in, in, in this case, uh, if you are going to select this to be equal to, let, let's say 1000 ohms, okay? And let's say if this is 100, okay? So you keep the center impedance below 100, okay? That, that's a free parameter. Why this is a free parameter? Uh, it's a free design parameter that is controlling the bandwidth is that you see this L network is going to transform uh, into a certain impedance okay because it's going to match uh, your load impedance finally you see the idea is uh, if you recall what we discussed previously this is this is only one L matching network it is like an inverter L of two reactive elements one is in the shunt and the other is in the series uh, what it does is that it uh, matches the source to load using the non-resistive elements, okay? So in this case, your source is 100,000 and the load is 10. So if you see the impedance Z left, okay, uh, looking from this side towards the, the source, um, you see it, it, uh, it, it's a parallel combination of the source resistor and the shunt, reactant, shunt reactive element. So it produces both uh, real and imaginary part, okay? Uh, so what you do is uh, you set, you pick up the value of XP so that the real part of Z left will be equal to, to 10 ohms. So the real part of this right-hand side of the equation should be equal to the R load or which is equal to 10 ohms, isn't that right? Because you see, uh, you're going to match this to 10 ohms. The thousand should be looking at the load uh, it should appear as 10 ohms, that, that, that's how you're going to match it. So, um, but then what to do about the imaginary part that is coming to the picture, okay? What to do about this part? So you see this part is cancelled by this series reactor by setting the x left equal to minus x of s or x series, or you can say x series is equal to minus x left, okay? So whatever it is, you set it to minus x left, so the imaginary part cancels out and you are left with the real part that matches the source impedance, okay? So what's going on over here is the real part is this, we set it to the load impedance that is a desired, that's a desired matching load uh, resistance. And you find out this value of xp, okay? So there's only one unknown, but it appears in quadratic, so you have this plus and minus. It, this plus means this is an inductor, negative means this, it's a capacitive reactive element. Uh, it's not important. I mean, you you can have uh, the, this this shunt element. It, it can either be capacitive reactance, it could be inductive reactance, up to you. Uh, but that's how you set the uh, real part of Z left, real part of Z left, equal to 
your load resistance. Okay, that's that's the first step to find XP. Once you found the XP, the shunt uh, reactive element, then you can substitute the value of XP in the imaginary part. Okay, that's your X left, and this is equal to the X left. So the imaginary of Z left over here is X left. Once you have this XP, you have the the reactance, either inductive or capacitive. It's not important again. So um, you find the uh, you find the, the reactance of the X series as minus X left. So whatever the imaginary part is coming for Z left, it is cancelled out for, by by this element, which is which is happened to be in the series with the load. So this this L section is uh, matching your source impedance to the load impedance, okay, uh, and the negative part, uh, the, the, the reactive part that is coming to the picture is being cancelled by this uh, series reactor, okay. So in uh, this is uh, what we have discussed earlier in part one and two of this um, impedance matching networks. Uh, you can you can click on the suggested links to see those videos. But uh, in uh, the difference in the pi network is that uh, you don't have a pre-designed parameter over here. Okay, you have to transform thousand to ten. That's it. But over here, since you are combining the two L network, whatever impedance is over here. It's a pre-designed parameter, okay? So, uh, so each uh, L section, each L section is going to transform down to the center impedance, that is the center. So there will be a center impedance over here, and that's your pre-designed parameter. And this is to be selected such that it is minimum of both the source and the load resistance, okay? So let's have a quick look on how we can uh, use this fact to design a pi network that can provide you a better Q uh, at the matching or design frequency. So uh, let's consider a problem where you, are, you have to use a pi network to match a 1000 ohm source with a 50 ohm load. And you are to vary the center impedance, Z center, to produce a high Q match at 1.5 megahertz. That happens to be your design frequency. And then find the corresponding reactive elements. Okay, because for implementation, you need to find those um, L1, L2, C1, C2. So this um l is actually the series combination of two inductive two inductances l1 and l2 okay that can be combined into a pi network so for each z center for each z center there are four z center values you find the corresponding l l and c1 and c2 how to do that is uh, you consider those design equations okay which we have talked about in the part two of uh, the l matching network you consider the quality factor these are the two design equations that you you want to remember so um, in this case, your source uh, resistance was was uh, was given as 1000 ohms, and the load was given as 50 ohm load. So you go ahead and find the for the on on the source side, you go ahead and find the Q of the first first L section. This is your first inverted L section. So 1000 over 10. 10 is the is the low resistance. Okay, this Z center is basically 10. Okay. 10 plus if I may write this as J0 there's no there's no imaginary part to it so anyway uh, 1000 is your source resistance that is a higher resistance so 1000 comes over here and you have 10 minus 1 this, this is your Q of the Q of, Q of the L matching network on the source side and then uh, from these design equations um, considering the quality factor um, as a ratio of the resistance to reactive uh, to the to, 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 to the reactants parallel and series you find the uh, parallel and shunt uh, parallel and series reactive elements so over here again uh, you're considering the source side so you have 1000 as high resistance and then this is the, the shunt reactive element uh, the shunt reactance is 9.95 and if you're going to select this as a capacitor which is uh, which is like this connected over here and then, then this can be found out from x parallel since x parallel is uh, this sorry this 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 is the Q of uh, your Q of your L uh, matching network the source side this is X parallel which is 100.5 and if you are going to find the capacitance associated with it that is 2 pi f c1 and f is 1.5 megahertz that is your design frequency okay so f is 1.5 megahertz just substitute those values and you will come up with the c1 as 1.056 nanofarads similarly for the series uh, reactive element which is the inductance you have x series so q is again 
for the same queue 9.95 for the same queue this is the same queue comes over here and that is set equal to x series over 10 because 10 is the uh, the low resistance okay so 10 because 10 is your center impedance which is lower than the high rs2000 so x series over low gives you 9.95 and then from here you find out you set this equal to basically 2 pi f into l1 okay this gives you l1 as uh, 10.56 micro henry then you continue this uh, use this design equation and continue the same procedure on the load side with the same center impedance okay this uh, you see this is still less than uh, 100 uh, sorry 1050 which is your load and uh, source resistances okay so it is the minimum of still less than the minimum of both uh, load and source resistance okay so we are going to vary this but you continue uh, the same procedure on the on the on the load side so on the load side we have our high is 50 because load is 50 load is set to 50 and uh, the source was a thousand so for this l network for the second l network on the load side you have the same design equation so 50 over 10 minus 1 you do have the quality factor of 2 then use these design equations find the uh, the shunt reactive that is uh, the shunt reactance is the capacitive reactance find this from x parallel at 25 this gives you c2 as 4.244 nanofarads at 1.5 megahertz then from the to find the series uh, reactance which is inductance uh, you find this from uh, x series considering the quality factor so x series is 20 and from here at 1.5 megahertz you find this out to be 2.122 and the series combination of 2.122 and 10.56 is this l which is equal to l1 plus l2 okay and then you um, try to complete this table these values uh, so for example for 10 i have this uh, the addition of uh, 10.56 plus 2.122 so this gives me 12.679 and if you recall c1 and c2 c1 was my 1.056 c2 is 4.244 and uh, you just uh, set up the circuit in ads and set up it for the linear uh, ac simulation circuit analysis to find out what is the power at the load so this is my uh, this node is at the load side v out so v out square over 50 is going to give me the power what's this frequency which is being swept from 0 to 2, 3 megahertz for the uh, for the given design frequency of 1.5 megahertz you can uh, this is an appropriate range with appropriate step size so the curve looks smooth enough so here are the uh, uh, here is the is another um, I can tell you the same design procedure for uh, Z center for let's say 40 ohms. Then you you can fill up this table for for 40 ohms. We have this inductance as 22.94914. Uh, then C1 is 0.52, C2 is 1.06. Okay, so you have those values. C2 is over here. This is your C1. Okay. And then you simulate your circuit okay you, you can you can complete the rest of the values you can verify those values for your own uh, convenience or for your own sake of understanding but i have those values so if you if uh, you consolidate consolidate those results uh, into a single depiction of this uh, the simulations for variable r center so so this we, have, we were varying the r center from 10 to 40 ohms okay and as a result of these variations in the center impedance keeping this minimum by 50 ohms which happens to be the load resistance you have a variable quality factors okay so this produces the narrowest band 10 okay out of all these four options then you have 20 the bandwidth the 3 dB bandwidth of the matches is, is increasing 30 40 but for all these uh, these four values at the design frequency of 1.5 this scale is it should be it should be 1.5 megahertz anyways it should be 1.5 megahertz or this 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 then okay this should be kilohertz then. um so at the at the design frequency 
you have the normalized power that is equal to one. The normal, the normalized power is not being compromised. Okay, you can you can control the overall frequency response. You can control the quality factors. Okay, because for example, the quality factor of uh, the quality factor for 40 ohms is you see is less than a quality factor of the 10 ohm central impedance. This 10 ohm is the is a solid black line. This line and uh, the broken line is for 40 so the q is higher because the bandwidth of the match is narrow when you are selecting the r center 10 ohms so so varying the r center you can you can vary the you can tune the quality factors in the pi network but you don't have this facility in the l networks uh, which consists of only two reactive elements here you have three reactive elements in the pi network so you can you can have a variable frequency response okay by varying the r center only so that, that, that's the idea behind um, so what happens if I increase G center to to be beyond to be greater than 50 ohms? Okay, what if G center is greater than 50 ohms or RL in this case? Okay, uh, because RL was said to be 50 ohms in all the simulations. Um, you see, the what happens is once you set this to be 50, your quality. If this is 50, then the, the right hand side of the equation becomes zero. That means you are looking at a very wide band match. Okay, you're not going to have a narrow band match like this, but it's a very wide band match, right? Because the quality is decreasing. So on the other hand, if you're going to select this to be thousand, you keep on increasing the R center or Z center from 50 to thousand. Okay, uh, that means um, the bandwidth of the match is increasing. Okay, and at the same time, you're compromising the the power that is being transferred. So let's have a look. Uh, this 10 is what we have seen before. Uh, R center is 10 for the previous results. Now, if you compare this with the, if you are going to increase R center for 100 ohms, uh, the bandwidth is, is increasing. So the Q is decreasing. So the Q, Q decreases as R center increases, so as RC increases, the Q decreases at the same time. At the same time, increasing Z center beyond the minimum of R load and R S reduces the Q of the match. At the same time, you're compromising the maximum power that can be transferred at the design frequency. So look what happens at 500 